So next up, we are joined by Dr. Mohamed Shakur, the CEO of Archer Materials with the ticker code AXE. To give us an update on their 12CQ quantum chip development, I will now hand you over to Mohamed. Good afternoon. Hey, can you hear me? We can. Let me bring up your presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm pleased to be addressing you today. Um, just a uh, mention that this presentation is for those of you who are new to Archer, uh, to our existing shareholders, uh, that you would notice some repetition. Um, but uh, for those of you who are new, I would like to really take this opportunity to introduce you to the global scale of opportunity that our technology represents. And uh, to our existing shareholders as well, um, you know, over the past two years, I think the things that we did were somewhat broad. Uh, I can confidently say that this is no longer the case. Uh, we've come a long way, I'm sure you'll agree. And, and today I'll give you all um, a bit of an insight into the wonderful work that Archer is doing. This is our disclaimer, but look, as a deep tech company, we are by our very nature forward looking, but the images that you see uh, you know, are all ours. Uh, the previous image that was on the title slide was you know, essentially where we, we do our work, where you operate from. It is a $150 million research and prototyping foundry for semiconductor device uh, development. So really the takeaway from here is that at Archer, we're well funded into the foreseeable future. Um, and, and we are really, I mean, this is great because we are long-term value driven. So we, we have a focus on a few key areas to generate value uh, during our growth. And that involves uh, tech development really at the cutting edge uh, of, of what you see in the world today in the semiconductor space. Uh, it's IP prosecution and also uh, partnerships with other global players, both small and large. But it's, it's really important to make a distinction here that we're not just a company that is working solely on um, developing a quantum chip. We are a semiconductor company building a number of high impact technologies. And we often refer to them as our one, two CQ chip, uh, our quantum chip and uh, our bio chip. But today I'll briefly talk about our flagship one, two CQ chip technology. And some of you look may be asking, what are these devices that we develop? Uh, where, does, you know, where do we work? I mean, we've just seen a presentation in therapeutic space and life sciences, and now we've switched over to uh, the semiconductor industry, but I'll get to that. Um, but I, I cannot understate the importance of having access to the talent, to the IP, the technology, and the facilities to do our work. Uh, it's probably the highest of high-tech industries, and some of you have been fortunate enough um, to come along and tour our foundry uh, where we work, the foundry facilities where we work, meet our staff, and, and even um, see some of the devices that we build. But if there is one thing I want to remind you of today, uh, and that is that we are one of very few companies in the world developing a quantum processor, and the only one listed on the ASX that's doing so. And our strategy is quite simple. It involves building advanced semiconductor devices. So I think it's important to acknowledge the industry that we operate in and to put our work at Archer into context. Uh, it's one of the largest industries in the world and it's one of the most important. Um, it's important to put it into context because this industry is somewhat absent in Australia. It's not our traditional industry. Um, and, and look, you know, although the outlook for the industry globally um, has seen uh, some short-term supply chain challenges. In the long term, it remains positive. Um, I think, ironically, those short-term challenges further illustrate the industry's importance uh, around the world. But the one thing I wanted to note here is that even though Archer focuses on the initial stages of the industry product lifecycle, the, the pre-R&D, R&D development, um, these are some of the areas with, with some of the highest total potential value capture in this industry. It's an enormous industry. I mean, you're talking trillions of dollars um, and it's second only to the finance industry. So I think it, the, the key point here is that really runs contrary to many other industries where you'd expect greater value to be obtained perhaps further downstream. I mean, take mining for an example where, you know, further downstream people can see value. But, it, you know, in the semiconductor industry, there's a lot of value to potentially be had even very early on. I think first it's very important to let you know then who's leading our development for our quantum chip. Uh, it's important because 
Our business is a complex business. This technology and industry is not easily understood. Um, it requires people with a particular set of skills that are very rare. I mean, if you look at an interview recently with the CEO of AMSL, one of the biggest semiconductor companies in the world, they produce instruments and, and machines for, for, the, for the giants like Intel and others. Um, I think he was asked a question around what are some of the biggest challenges that you see in the industry and, and, and for your company moving forward. And, and he was very frank, he said talent. Um, and so, you know, it's very important uh, here to really highlight the people that we do have at Archer leading our development. I'm proud to say that we, we do have those people with those particular set of skills that are very rare in the world uh, at Archer. And since the start of 2022, we, we've been on a recruitment drive. Um, we've been attracting pioneers in the field and we've been, you know, growing into a team that I, I strongly believe uh, rivals any in the world. Um, our progress to date the devices that we've built and, and the patterns that we've generated and granted, I think really testify to this. And I'm, I'm confident uh, in our ability to execute on our plans uh, moving forward. Uh, and in saying that, so you can see the smile on my face because I think um, the excitement around quantum computing, I, I really believe is, is, is around its promise to, I think, impact almost every sector that is currently dependent on or will be dependent on computational power. The important thing to note here is that to unlock this value, the technology hardware needs to mature. I mean, no one's cracked it. No one's built these quantum computers. It's, we're still early days, right? Um, but there already are real use cases for quantum computing. And, and the uses in the shorter term are evolving um, and they are you know, on the way to these longer term goals of full compute. It's already happening. Uh, however, I will say, and, and, and I will uh, you know, add our pragmatism, our cautious optimism here is that they're limited in scope. But the last five years has seen an extraordinary growth in quantum computing applications. Um, you know, I often get asked how much more powerful is a quantum computer than the normal computer? Is it gonna save me time, energy, money? It can do things faster? Look, early on, you can try all you, all you want to compare with superlatives and objectives and with modern computing. But the reality is they are incomparable. I mean, even at the early stage, the only thing they have in common is the fact that they use the word computing, right? So um, I'll leave that there because it just goes beyond the scope of this presentation. But you'll see on this slide that each of these sectors could benefit tremendously with the advent of advanced computing, like quantum computing. Um, and as Really, the, the, the solutions um, the technology offers uh, matures over the next 10, 20, 30 years. And I'm sure you'll agree that number in the top left corner is a big number. Uh, and this type of potential you know, penetration into the global economy means that really it's no secret that quantum computing could give nations a competitive advantage because fundamentally it could address all sectors that is dependent on an increase in computational power. So for Archer, I guess the key for us at this early stage is in really positioning our technology uh, where there are clear benefits for mobile use. And I'll get into that uh, in a moment, but also with the understanding that this emerging technology is widely expected to solve some very valuable problems. Um, and I really wanna emphasize these valuable problems that today's most powerful, supercomputers cannot solve and, and never will. So, um, you know, just take caution in the hype that you read in the news and the tabloid media. Um, there is an incredible promise and potential with quantum computing. It is still early stage, uh, but the potential for broad scope application is significant. So quantum physics aside, I think what you need to understand about uh, quantum computing you know, is its power and potential? And I guess, where does Archer fit into all of this? Um, the power and potential of quantum computing comes from the development of the most critical part of a quantum machine, and that is the cubic processor. It's a device, it's a chip. Um, and importantly, what I want to say is that, you know, Archer is not playing catch up in the world. We're one of very few companies that are developing a quantum computing chip. Um, and technologically at Archer, we do have a unique value proposition that holds up as a world first. And it's that our qubit processor could potentially allow for quantum computation at normal conditions on board modern mobile devices. Um, 
this for quantum computing is an astounding proposition. And it's, it's astounding because, I mean, your computers already work at room temperature and you already have mobile devices. For quantum computing, this isn't so straightforward. Um, so, so this is a proposition that we can really back up with years of R&D and we have already started building our technology. Um, a lot of work has gone into the technology, but uh, some of you may ask, well, you know, how do you accelerate such an exciting development? Um, well, what I can say to that is you, you really, you bring on the right talent, you work with the best tech development institutes in the world, you protect your IP, you innovate, you do the science, and you achieve you know, what many thought was unachievable. And this is what we've been doing at Archer, what we continue to do, what we continue to do methodically and deliberately um, by advancing on our path to developing this technology. And it's incredibly exciting to just, to just be able to be in this position um, where we are today. And I wanted to illustrate this proposition because we're a tech company. Right, we build technology. This, this is the technology value proposition at the core of our commercial opportunity. That our, our technology could potentially enable the widespread use of quantum power devices, QPMDs. Um, I'm sure if you go back and you, you do your reading and, and, you, and you investigate further about quantum computing and the different architectures and the drawbacks and the, the trade-offs and the resource constraints and how they fill a room, um, having a, a mobile-based device that can um, potentially, you know, enable uh, quantum, quantum computation is, is absolutely astounding. So I'm sure you would agree that this is a competitive advantage that is worth protecting and that this is a technology that is worth developing. And we're doing this. We really are. We're, we're doing this by making real quantum hardware and the hardware that could potentially do this. These are devices that scientists only began to imagine or figure their imagination a few decades ago. Uh, it's no longer pie in the sky. We've shown this. Uh, you can see here an image on the right hand side. This is, um, this is a device that we've put together with our colleagues at EPFL in Switzerland, the Swiss Institute for Federal uh, Technology, Federal Institute of Technology in Switzerland, home of Logitech, the Rolex Innovation Center, solar cells were invented there. Um, the little, little on the, end, on the end of this device is about a half millimeter by half millimeter chip that contains a, what we call a high electron mobility transistor that has been used and developed. And there's other circuitry on there that we use to detect quantum information at room temperature uh, in our, what we call qubits that are in there, but they're a trillionth of a liter in size. So you can't really see them. Um, this kind of technology is the kind of technology that's used in your mobile phone and your mobile antennas, right? So we've taken already mobile compatible technology and used it to detect quantum information at room temperature. Um, this is absolutely phenomenal. It, it's a world first um, and it's a result, like I said, over, over a, a decade of world-class R&D. What you see here is really a primer for this transformative technology on the road to our ultimate goal. It's direct proof that cuts through the hype surrounding quantum computing, and it really supports this exciting possibility of, of QPMDs. And it's given us at Archer the confidence to say that we can really do something special here. Um, so um, just in conclusion, just the next slide. Uh, just in conclusion, what I want to say is that Archer is building itself into a semiconductor company. That is our strategy now and going forward. We have really grown over the last few years uh, with a solid uh, development track record. Uh, we, we've grown um, you know, our team. Uh, we have access to the technology, the funding, the patents, the IP, the facilities, the infrastructure uh, to really confidently and competently, and I would also say pragmatically, uh, move forward. And, and really, with our focus, uh, it means we've had a, a clear strategy and we have a clear strategy and that we've been ex executing over the last few years. Um, our growth is, is not a result of overnight success. Um, this stuff takes time, it's difficult work, but we are doing it. Um, it's the result of really the quality of work that we're doing, the quality of management executing on our plans. It's a world first, right? You can't Google the answer here. 
and really the, the quality of the organizations that we work with. Um, we've, I know some of you have questions around timelines and commercialization, but look, we've set commercial roadmaps for our technologies and we are at the point of where we need to be right now. Um, you may consider these areas on this slide as, as potential news flow catalysts for those of you in the investment community. But um, ultimately, I hope today in this brief time, I've showed you that um, what I can say is, I guess, at Archer, I, I believe that we have a very bright future ahead of us. And, and so I hope I've conveyed to you today some of the excitement of what we're doing and, and how things are really coming together at Archer and, and how... Uh, eminently worthwhile uh, it is to pursue such an endeavor. So on that note, thank you very much uh, and thank you for your attention. And I'm happy to take um, some, some questions from, from those uh, in attendance today. Mohammed, as always, thank you for the great presentation. We've got a few questions for you, so I'm gonna jump into them though. So um, can you talk us a little bit more about the competitive landscape in the sector and probably more so about the advantages of the Arch of Arch's technology? Yeah, so look, in this, Sector, it's all early days, but you'd be surprised just how many Aussies are leading the way in the world in quantum computing. It's, it's wonderful. I mean, you have the team at IBM led by Jay Gambetta, who, who builds the cloud-based superconducting quantum systems, like the, the most uh, advanced quantum machines uh, on earth today that, that we have access to at Archer. Um, you have others in companies like SciQuantum who, who work on um, photonic-based um, uh, quantum computing systems. Others in Xanadu, uh, based in Canada, again, Aussies, uh, you know, in the photonic space. In Australia, we have companies like Silicon Quantum Computing uh, and others that are emerging, spinning out of universities and, and doing some wonderful things in that space. But they all come with their trade-offs and, and ultimately, it's the materials that are the tangible physical basis of all these technologies. They determine the, the intrinsic properties of, of what you can and can't do with your technology and how you can and can't scale your business model. Um, take, for example, um, superconducting based qubit systems. You need cooling systems. These are large refrigeration systems using helium that fill a room. The great for cloud, cloud based quantum computing, but can't fit in your phone. So, I guess to say there's, there's room for all to play uh, in the space early on. And Archer is really setting itself up with its. Um, you know, technological advantages that we've protected through patents, we've published in, the, in some of the best journals in the world. They really demonstrate the ability to operate, um, the potential to operate these materials to, to process quantum information at room temperature on board modern devices, which is a real paradigm shift in the field. It's a healthier ecosystem out there. Brilliant. And look, you did mention this through your presentation, just about um, strengthening those partnerships. But is there an opportunity for further partnerships with sort of big tech or otherwise? Yeah, look, I, I think that's we're not going to go build a semiconductor foundry. right? We, we have to understand if we go back to that initial slide where I showed, um, we're not trying to you know, be everything in the supply chain. Um, it's very expensive to build these foundries like a, a a foundry to purely kind of manufacture chips today costs an upwards of $10 billion, right? So we, we would rely on strategic partnerships as we progress through our development um, to, to partner with the right organizations uh, to get our work done and to actually build our devices and demonstrate they work. And this is what we've been doing and what we'll continue to do moving forward. Uh, so it's really exciting stuff. And Mohammed, so what, what sort of primary market will Archer be targeting once commercialized? I think you can let your imagination run free here. Um, you know, when they first developed, uh, when Intel back in the 70s, I love this question. I, I find that extraordinary as well. But what I can say to those who are asking this question is, go back and read um, Intel's annual reports from the late 70s and early 80s. Pretty cool. Um, apart from the really cool images back in the 70s and 80s, um, what you find is um, there are some parallels you can draw where, you know, I think Intel at the time started off, they had their memory and, and their little microprocessors on the side, uh, you know, focusing on, on built on calculators, right? Um, and then quickly pivoted into more broad scope general use. To tell you the truth, um, I don't think anyone in the field actually knows exactly what quantum computing is going to be used for in terms of general purpose, but there are some clear benefits where in mobile use it would make sense, right? Um, you saw that, uh, kind of image where we had uh, application spaces in, in autonomous vehicles, in 
in the need for onboard kind of low latency um, you know, applications. But the reality is those applications will stem from the people developing those algorithms. We build the chip so the people making the algorithms can help with the end, use end user and the subsequent applications. But we, we see you know, a broad scope potential for the use of mobile-based quantum computing devices. Thanks, Mohammed. And just finally, and I know you did touch on this, but what news flow can shareholders look forward to over, let's say, the next three to six months? Yeah, look, I mean, if you look back at Archer's history and our and, and what we announce and, and, and how we go about um, our, 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 our work, you'll see that we're, we're not a company that um, is built off the, you know, the success of just a single result, right? Um, we, we really, we... Um, there's a lot to look forward to at Archer, is, is what I'm trying to say. We, we have a multi-pronged approach to development of our, at Archer. It involves the early stage commercialization through the prosecution of, of patents and IP. Um, we've, we've got our patents through in a number of jurisdictions in the world, but we, um, we have patents still pending in Australia and Hong Kong. Um, our technology development, you know, I, I really cannot emphasize this enough. We're a technology company. Without the technology, you have nothing, right? So. Um, really that technology development and, and making those uh, step changes in, in tech development towards our ultimate goal. Uh, and now, you know, working on strengthening those strategic partnerships and, and building new strategic partnerships around the world within the supply chain and semiconductor industry, but also broadly uh, in the quantum ecosystem in Australia and around the world. Well, Mohammed, thank you so much for joining us. We've been following the story for quite some time and we look forward to having you again on Broker Briefing soon. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much.